Praise the Lord, everybody. Come on, we can do better than that. Praise the Lord, everybody. Hallelujah. Listen, I know we're here for a, pray, uh, a play, but one of my people at that saying that regardless of a play, I'm still here to bless the name of Jesus. I'm still here to glorify his name. I'm still here to lift his name. I'm still here to give him praise. I'm still here to give him honor. I'm still here to give him adoration because it's you unto him. Because I know that if it had not been for the Lord on my side, I don't know where I'd be. I sure don't want to be sitting here at a play. I don't know where I would be. I, I could have lost my mind. I could have been sleeping in my grave. But because of God, I'm able to sit here and enjoy a play about him. So I'm going to give a praise. Hallelujah. Come on, somebody lift your hands in this place and give God glory. Come on, we want his glory to rise. We want his, he, we want his glory to rise. We want him to saturate this place like never before. Even for a play. Hallelujah. 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 Come on, we know this song. Just begin to clap your hands. Let the glory of the Lord rise. Hallelujah.
so deserving, Jesus. Anything that we ask for, we know that you can give it. But what, what shocks me about him is that he don't just give us what we think about. He exceeds the expectation. And only a God can do that. Hallelujah. And that's why I got to give him glory. I got to give him honor because nobody else can do the things that he does. Hallelujah. Hey! <laughs> 
believe that God is able? Do you believe that God is able? He's able. He's able. He's able. He's able. He's able. Do you know he's able? Do you know he's able? Have you ever tried him? Has he blessed your soul? He's able. God is able. God is able to do more than we can even imagine. Will you, will you try to pray? I know, I know the Holy Spirit is so hot. But can we just cry? Oh, thank you, Jesus. I'm a Baptist preacher, so I'm going to be short. Amen. Please pray with me. Gracious Lord Jesus, we thank you for this day. We thank you for this event. We thank you for the man of God whose vision is now coming to reality. Lord God, we thank you for your son. We thank you for his dying. We, we thank you for him coming up out of a grave on the third day. So, Lord God, we pray that you will sanctify these players. Lord God, we pray that you will sanctify these musicians. Lord God, we pray that you will sanctify our souls, that they are able to be receptive to the message that you're trying to give us here this evening. Lord God, we don't want to take any of your glory. We can't give you all but praise. So, Lord God, we just thank you for blessing us, for giving us this opportunity. For, Lord God, you said if I be lifted up, if I be lifted up, you see, Jesus didn't tell them what was going on for us. He knew that if they lifted him up on that cross, and he would do all the Lord God, we thank you. And bless continually done in us. We give you all praise. We give you all honor and glory that is due. In the name of your son, Jesus, in the name of the almighty Jesus, that name above every name, in the name of Jesus, we pray. Will all here say amen? Amen. Thank God.
Let's thank God for Dr. Runner Ayrton. Come on, come on. Come on, let's show some love to his beautiful wife. Amen, Mrs. Ayrton. Allow me to recognize some that are present, and we know that Saturdays are the days that people don't normally just kind of rest and shop, just kind of enjoy yourself. But we thank you for coming out this evening, and I heard Reverend Johnson say that somebody's coming to see Reverend Johnson. So that was wonderful. <laughs> but allow me to recognize some of our officials and leaders that are present, and then we're going to greet you, and we're going to hear from two individuals that's making an impact in our city, and our state, even around the world. We thank God for Bishop Derek and Dr. Natasha Mack. We thank God for Bishop John Lester. We thank God for Bishop J. Nathan Page grandson. We thank God for Overseer Gloria Pollard. Overseer Richard and Supervisor Beverly Reynolds. Overseer Tabitha Anderson. Supervisor Janice Whitehead. Amen. I think she went out. Pastor Jeremy Stone, a son. Pastor John I. Davis III, and I tell you, let's celebrate him because we know it's been a difficult time for him, but we thank God for strength. Amen. Reverend Ann Johnson, so supportive. Reverend Linda Smiley, amen. Amen. And are there any other preachers? of the city that I didn't see. You can stand. I want to make sure I recognize you. Amen. All right. Our shepherdess, Frida Leggett. We call her Mother Leggett. Come on, let's show some love to Mother Leggett. So supportive to us. Amen. Thank you. And to all the preachers of our church, whether it's here, Greater Joy Cathedral, or Joy Temple of Lennox, or Joy Temple of Jacksonville, we thank God for you. We'll be here tomorrow for Fifth Sunday Fellowship. Amen. And so some are already here. I do want to thank God, soon to be Dr. James Brown, representing Albany State University. And he's now the advisor for the ASU Gospel Choir. We are working together. That's my God, son. Amen. And also represent from Albany State University, from the president's office, Miss. Andrea Felton, and she brought her whole guests with her. Come on, let's thank God for, let's thank God for all being the State University. Come on, come on, that's a beacon in our city. We got some alumni in the house. Amen. Thank God for you. Uh, at this time, I'm going to bring on uh, two individuals for prior to doing that. I want to say this. I was on Facebook one night, and um, a notification came across and I saw that they were promoting on some of our school campuses Satan's Club. And I said, wait a minute, we got to get back to the Great Commission. Because a lot of times we can preach prosperity, but we got to preach coming back to Christ. Somebody say amen. And so we have a lot of young people here. I want from the ages of 7 to 21 to stand, from the ages of 7 to 21 7 to 21, if you're 7 to 21. Can y'all can y'all please show some love to all of our young people? Come on. Y'all got to do better than that. These are young people that came out. Thank you. Amen. And we know that um, so much is being presented on our school campuses. One of our elders just, sp just spoke the other night in our church in Lennox, and she was just mentioning how her daughter grew up in our church. It was presented to her and it was trying to confuse her. But we thank God that she knew the way. Amen. Everybody just tell somebody Jesus Christ is the way. So 
So how many are saved and glad you are saved? Amen. And salvation is not a denomination. And, and, and my late bishop, Bishop J.L. Littman, we, we, we didn't just, just hang around our church. At our anniversary, we can celebrate him every Sunday evening. We look forward to Union Baptist and Reverend Stevenson coming over. Amen. And some of y'all don't remember the late Reverend Jake Edwards. Y'all ain't saying that. And the late Reverend Heath. You know, you know, back in the day, we would have church. You know, Reverend Lowe and friendship. I'm telling my age. Amen. <laughs> So we would go from church to church and just have a good time. And so we're so glad that we're coming together for a common cause. And so when I saw that, I said, let's do something. Let's do something. And so that was a play that was brought to our organization some years ago at Lipma Cathedral. And back then, I played as the devil. <laughs> and we had an amazing time. And so I thought about this again. So I was on the phone with our Minister Montre Merritt, he's a member here, a great musician, he also played the pleasant wheel, and I want us to show love. Montre, just raise your hand, he's in the back. Come on, everybody show love to Montre. Come on, do a little better than that. Y'all can call me, hey Pops, and so when he called me, I said, I got something in my spirit say let's make it happen. It's good to have people that'll say let's make it happen. <laughs> and so I know it's small but we'll start in something big. That is um, a group that's here. They have a play that they travel and present. They have even gone to Bishop Paul Morton and I heard that I supposed to be in that play. <laughs> but they are doing wonderful things. I want them to stand. Amen. And we want to thank God for these great these great people, this man and woman of God, come on, show some love, amen, they are traveling, and we're going to let them know, we're going to let them announce the play that they are doing so that we can support, amen, amen, so tonight, I want um, Lady Roz, as we hear on the radio station, but our Minister Rosalind Coning to come and to greet us, and she has really pushed this, and after she has come, and I purposely didn't recognize him with other preachers because he's going to come after her. But I want to thank God for our coroner that worked so hard. Come on, come on. Not only is he our coroner, he's a pastor. Michael Fowler, come on, show some love to. And he witnessed a lot of things firsthand. And he's going to tell us a few things and why this is important that we present Christ, now they are asking pastors to invite people out to church because of the gang violence and because of what's happening. You can't downplay the church because if people don't get the word, they will have some issues. Amen? Amen. So at this time, let us all give a round of applause to Lady Ross. And after her, Carla Fowler. Mm. Come on and put those hands together. Like you love the Lord. Like you love Jesus. I thought I was just coming. But I'm so humbled and honored to be here. Been here many times. Let me set order. Mm. I give honor. To God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. I honor the watchman of this house. One whom I've watched from a, a baby. And as I watched you, Bishop, just a few minutes ago, man, I don't care what you say, house of God, saints of Christ, still in you. I'm looking at your haircut. Hot hour. The old saints and those who are watching around the world, they know what I'm talking about. I honor all ministers in your position. 
but I glorify Jesus tonight. I bring you greetings from he who said, if I be lifted up from the earth, I'll draw all men unto me. This is kind of special for me tonight, Bishop, because I've only been here once. No, I have not been here since we laid a woman that I served, and I served her well. And that's Mother Littman. And when I sat back there by Fred, because, you know, I was all right back there in the bag. When I would come in past times, I would have to come up with Mrs. Littman. And she'd sit over here or sit right there on that first row. And I'd just go back to the back. Sometimes I'd sit with her. But, Cornell, wherever you are, I'm going to be on my best behavior tonight, I promise you. Listen. Heaven or hell. The choice is yours. The choice is mine. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but shall have everlasting life. I bring you greetings from Olive Broadcast Media where I work. And the ministry, I thank you, God, for your support. But you know, Bishop Conwell, we were talking about the young folk. But there's some old folk who were standing in the dangers of going to hell in the church. So what I want to challenge you guys to do, I saw where Scarla Brown is here. I see you, boy. Yes, sir. I love you. Listen, I challenge every leader in the church under my voice, to teach our children other than just Jesus. Yeah, Jesus it is. But I need you to teach them more than he died and he got up one day. So that when these other forces of evil come at them, they won't be confused, Bishop, because we will have taught them in our houses. And if you don't know what to teach them, Get in somebody's seminary school. Now, something we said in our convention the other day in the 2nd District, Bishop Page, what it took for us, we got to do something different with these folks today. Do you guys hear me? We got to do something different. We have to meet them where they are. And I hope my son is watching. My son said to me when COVID came, Bishop Page, he said, the church folk and the preachers don't fix this, so can't nobody go to church no more. And I asked him, I said, son, why do you say that? He said, mama, when people come to church, most of them are hurting. They're hurting. And say, at our church, we just look at them. If they don't look like you, they look in some kind of way, sister, sister Leggett, mother Leggett. We treat them a certain kind of way. They come to church, we jump them, we shout them, and we send them back home hurting. I said, oh, that's what you mean. We can't go to church now. He said, no. He said, the Bible said, go ye into the highways and the hedges. He said, mama, y'all got to take the church to the people. So I challenge you guys tonight. Everyone around the world that's under the sound of my voice, let's come out of these four walls. Let's come out of these four walls and serve the people so that we can take home because Jesus is coming again, y'all, and it ain't going to be long. Listen, I'm going to my seat, but just remember this. The Lord is soon to come. He is soon to come. Where will you spend eternity Will it be heaven or hell? It's personal. The choice is yours. May the spirit of God rest, rule, and abide with you all forever and henceforth. To God be the glory for the things that he's done and the things that he's going to do. Let's enjoy Jesus tonight because I'm going to heaven. I don't know about you.
Good evening. It's good to be in the house of the Lord one more time. Give God the honor and thank him for his son Jesus. Thank God for being saved tonight. Realize could have been doing something else or been somewhere else, but God being good to me. Amen. Give God the honor for the man of the house. And when he mentioned it to me about saying a few words, you know, I um, always love doing it for the young people because they are our future. It's a different world when we was growing up. And then uh, it's a different world. My daughter's here. Glad to have her here. And then uh, my oldest granddaughter, she was 24, my oldest granddaughter. And my youngest grandchild, is, she's two years old, my grandson. It's a different world from the 24 to 22. Peer pressure and stuff is out there in this world. It's ridiculous. I try to encourage young people. Live the day just like it's your last day because tomorrow is not promised to you. When you go to the cemetery, you see small graves with large graves. Had a young fellow that was selling drugs, came by the funeral home. The gangs came by and shot him right in the funeral home door. He, uh, one of the ladies ran out of the funeral home. Instead of giving him the CPR, she carried him through the sentence of prayer because she knew he was going to die. You don't know what life is going to end for you. When you lie down, your eyes closed, and your mouth locked, rigor mortis set in, it's heaven or hell. It ain't no, you don't wake up. Kids sometimes shooting guns now like the people going to get up at the end of the play, but they don't get up. I want you to realize that life is precious. Many times in the school, back in the 70s when I was in the school, Kids picked at us because we went to school. They call us the Holy Rollers and uh, whatever, Apostle Rebels. We, because we live a uh, lifestyle that we just didn't do like everybody else did. People laugh and talk now, but I look at a lot of my friends now that laugh and pick at me now. A lot of them still over there on Clark Avenue. A lot of them still in, up under the tree. A lot of them in jail and a lot of them in the grave. They asked me, how did I get this far? I said, I, I got this far through Jesus. It was all about Jesus. In a couple more weeks, I'll be turning 65. I know I don't look that same. But uh, <laughs> God beautified me to salvation. But I'm saying, I gave God my life earlier. Because like I said, I'm afraid. I don't want to go to hell. I don't want my children to go to hell. I don't want no young child. I don't want nobody to go to hell, especially my young people. I go to schools now and talk to kids about the drugs and the guns or whatever. I worked in a homicide yesterday. The girl got killed in the hotel. Um, and I, most time when I go to a homicide and somebody get killed, I, when I'm standing over, I ask the question sometimes, did this person know Jesus? Tomorrow's not promising. You can walk out of here right now. Somebody can come into the church and start shooting up right now. But you need to know Jesus because Mama, the dad, there's nobody else going to be able to stand before God and give an account of you, but you got to stand before God yourself. Are you going to heaven or hell? You got to stand before God. And God going to judge you based on what you know. Somebody say, I've been to church all my life. I've been, but do you really know Jesus? Do you have a relationship with Jesus? You got too many people filling the choir stand, too many people in the church just standing around and go back out on Monday through Saturday. They do all kinds of dead women to come to church on Sunday. Just keep on coming to church. Now, keep on coming. I want you to keep coming because I believe God can deliver everybody. I believe God can save everybody. But I want you to know that life is too precious for you. You do not have to be like all your brothers and friends and stuff in school because a lot of them is not going to make it. A lot of my friends that I came up with, they died on drugs. They was an alcoholic, and they died and didn't know Jesus. Some of them didn't even go to church. But you can be one of the ones that go, and you can be one of the ones that find Christ. And I found out, I was used to, when I was growing up in church, I didn't know a lot of things. I learned a lot as I got older, but I learned about God, grace. Grace and mercy because I thought that you had to jump across the chairs and speak in tongues and all that to, to be saved. But I learned about you being saved is what you believe in your heart. You, you, you may not do like mama. You may not do like grandma. But you just, if you just live the life and believe in Christ and God save you and ask God to come in your life, that's all it takes. But it's so much violence out there. And, I, and I'm, I'm, doing, I'm doing a presentation. We're going to be going to some of the school. The drugs out there now. And that some people, some of the people that are dying on now is they look like gummy bears, fentanyl. 
Y'all don't know. There's so much going out there, children. Just why I say you can't run with your, uh, all your friends because all of them are not going to make it. But you can be one of the ones that show your light in the school that I'm going to be all that and a bag of chips too. No, I ain't going to be just like the average person. I don't want to be like the average person. I want to I wanna make it in. I don't want to burn in hell the rest of my life. I, I, I mean, some people just hell bound. They said, I don't believe in God. I ain't going to do it. I ain't going to church. That's you. But you ain't going to let you stop me. Hell is real. Heaven is real. We trying to get, gain all the stuff that we can gain here, the nice cars, the nice homes, and, the, and all of that. All that stuff going to fade away. I was uh, studying the message yesterday. Um, over there, I thought looking better than over here. <laughs> because... Heaven is a beautiful place to go. Because every time I go out my door, every time I cut my TV on, you see all the shooting. Uh, it's it not just poli uh, police brutality. I've, I found out most time it's black on black crime. I'm just being real. We don't talk about that. When a, when a, when a, when a white cop, somebody shoot a, 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 a black person, then we raise picket signs. We get out there and march or whatever. But when another black man shoot another black man, they, 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 they don't say nothing about that. But that's still a soul. That's still a soul. So we got to find Christ for ourselves and no guard for yourself. Thank you for having me. Thank you. Thank you. At this time, Bishop Mike is going to come and present our play. And how many are ready? <laughs> We ask you to engage, clap, laugh, and get with them. It's going to be some comical moments. It's going to be some serious moments. And we didn't charge you. Before we exit, we will ask for a free will offering um, just so that we can show our musicians and, and those that have worked so hard some love. Amen. At this time, Bishop Mike is going to come in his own way after he has come. We're ready to present a COP production, Heaven or Hell, the choice is yours. Everybody look at somebody and say, I don't want to go to hell. <laughs> we used to sing the song, hell is deep and wide, there's no joy inside. <laughs> Discussion, he gave them a choice. He said, out of everything you may eat, except one tree, and they made the wrong choice. Joshua, the mighty military man of God, got with the younger generation who had made it, took them on a historical and etymological tour, and brought them to the present. He gave them a choice. Choose ye this day whom you're going to serve. Jesus Christ even provided a choice between he and the prince of the power of the air. He said, the thief cometh but to steal, kill, and destroy. But I come that you might have life and life more abundantly. Tonight, you will be presented with a greater understanding of a choice. And I dare us to be different than Adam and Eve. I dare us to be different than the previous generation of the children of Israel. And I dare us to be different than those who did not choose Jesus but chose the prince of the power there. I dare you to leave here different tonight after hearing these men and women presented. Leave here making the right choice.
the trumpet has sounded, the dead in Christ have risen from the slumber to meet Christ in the air. Now we're here at Judgment Day to give an account of the work we've done and the sins we've committed. This evening, we'll see the saints and the ain'ts stand before God to either receive their reward of everlasting life or their wages of death. So the question tonight, will it be heaven or will it be hell? What choice did they make? This moment is the day that Sister I Got It Together has been preparing for since the day she got saved. She attends Sunday school. She attends the worship experience every Sunday and be at Bible study every Wednesday. And when she comes, she's always dressed up. She always looked like she had it together. But Sister I Got It Together always acted as if she was the only one that had it together. She was full of self-righteous indignation. She even died standing in the mirror, giving her testimony to herself. So the question tonight for Sister I Got It Together, was she righteous enough to make it in? Now Judgment Day is here. Yes, Lord, I'm here. I'm here, God. Sister, I got it together. Yes. 
please step forward. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Right, yes. right there. Yes, sir. The word of the Lord declares, for being ignorant of the righteousness of God yes, Lord. and seeking to establish their own, they did not submit to God's righteousness. Yes, Lord. This is a generation that are pure in their own eyes, yes. and yet they are not washed from their filthiness. There is a generation, oh, how lofty are their eyes, and their eyelids are lifted up. In that same regard, the scripture declares, enter in at the straight gate, for wide is the gate, and broad is the way that leadeth to destruction, and many there be which go thereat, because the straight is the gate. And narrow is the way that leads unto life. And few be that find it. Depart from me. What? I never knew you. I told you. Hold on, wait a minute. Hold on. Hey, hey, hey. You sure? Hold on. Get a little close. Wait a minute. Share that one more time. Come on with me. He know me. Wait, let me talk to God. He know me. He know my name. Wait, you sure? All right. Oh, God. Right. I got another Check one. Check my social security number. I don't think that's me. That's all right. Oh, my God. I got another Boy, one. Boy, Jesus. <laughs> Woo! <laughs> and the Bible declares, And if the righteous scarcely be saved, where shall the ungodly and the sinner appear? Many people were shocked when they heard of the passing, a prophet don't miss. Many nicknamed him the master prophet because he never missed a fact when prophesied. He would call you out by your name and didn't know you. But as quiet as it is kept, he would have people search your Facebook page. He knew exactly who you were when he came to your service. Some would even say that he would call you out by your social security number. And I just don't believe the Lord would commit that kind of HIPAA violation. With all of his prophesying, did prophet don't miss live a life that wouldn't allow him to miss heaven. Now judgment day is here. Well, I feel something in here tonight. Musicians, give me some rumba. <laughs> Roshan da 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 bo ho. Yeah. Mm, 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 mm. You stand up. Whoa, my, 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 my. Rosh kababa so koba. Lord, got a word for you. Got a word. In your house. Am I talking to you? Got a house? You got a bathroom. Mm hmm. In that bathroom, there's a faucet with a hot. Am I talking to you? The Lord said, get ready to give you a husband. That's right. To help you turn the cold water on. I shot my back. I need $50. $50. Come on. Come on, lift your hands. Huh? Y'all don't want no word. Y'all don't want that word in the My savior of my host. Uh-huh. You holding that baby, God going to do something for you tonight. I got water for sale to heal your power. Shanda Bas. Manda na ma. She ain't got no money. Don't waste it. Don't waste the word on her. Mm. Mm-mm. Father, you poor. Come on. Somebody else need a word. Come all right, on. Alright, sir. Alright. Mm. We need some money. That's enough father. Prayer handkerchiefs. Yeah. You get one for 15 or two for 20. That's it. That's it. <laughs> alright, alright, alright. It was fun while I lasted. That is a character. That is a cartoon character. B E T. Devil is a lie. He the pop off. No, I'm not. Prophet, don't miss. Please step forward. That's that's that right there. Don't you take another step. <laughs> the word of the Lord declares. Preach it. Beware of false prophets, yes. which come to you in sheep's clothing. Mm -hmm. But inwardly they are ravening wolves. Yes, Lord. Ye shall know them by their fruits. I got fruit. Do men gather grapes, thorns, or figs, or thistles? 
Even so, the good tree bringeth forth good fruit, but a corrupt tree bringeth forth evil fruit. I know I ain't corrupt. A good tree cannot bring forth evil fruit, neither can a corrupt tree bring forth good fruit. Every tree that bringeth not forth good fruit is hewn down and cast into the fire. <laughs> Wherefore, by their fruits ye shall know them. Not everyone that saith to me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven, he talking to but me? he that doeth the will of my Father which is in heaven. Many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in your name? And in thy name have they cast out devils? Uh -oh. And in thy name they done many wonderful works. Mm. And I will profess to them as I do to you this day. I never knew you. <gasps> Depart from me, ye yeah. uh -oh. worker of you know iniquity. Me. Uh -huh. You know me. I never I got saved in 89. Uh -huh. You. Uh -huh. I came from Mr. Uh -huh. Caldwell Church. You know me. Come on. I Come on. I got another one. I <laughs> All these prayer handkerchiefs I done prayed over. Uh -huh. I know, right? I'll sell them for you. <laughs> oh, Jesus. Yeah. Oh, it's hot in here. Yes, it is. Fire, fire, fire. And the Bible teaches us that many will have a form of godliness, but deny the very power thereof. Yes, sir. Well, the Bible also instructed us that there was a sainted mother who fell asleep in the Lord. Her name was Mother O Glory. Mother O Glory lived a simple life, but a full one. Mother O Glory didn't travel the world preaching the gospel, but she was always willing to name the name of Christ to everybody that she knew. She didn't have a lot of money. She didn't need a platform or a microphone, but her life spoke for itself. She showed love. She showed compassion and always made sure that everybody had a good meal. Old Mother Glory died on her centennial birthday. She lived to be one exactly 100 years old. She died surrounded by her loved ones. And can you imagine what her last dying words were? Old Glory, now judgment day is here. By me, say, no can walk up there. Are you sure you can walk? But the pure in heart Are you pure? is a highway. Get me hit, say, to heaven. Walking up the king highway. Can you walk? It's a highway. I rebuke to say, to heaven. Get some steps up there. No one can walk up there. You don't get tired. But up here in heart, so highway on, to heaven. Walking up the King Highway. How? Come on. Ain't she full, ain't she? Oh, yes, she is. My God, she's full. Mother of glory. Will you please step forward? All right, mother. The word of the Lord declares in 2 Timothy 2, verses 3 through 5. There thou therefore endure hardness as a good soldier of Jesus Christ. No man that warreth entangleth himself with the affairs of this life, that he may please him who hath chosen him to be a soldier. And if a man also strive for masteries, yet he is crowned, except he strive lawfully. Fear none of these things which thou shalt suffer. Behold, the devil hath cast some of you into prison, that ye may be tried, and ye shall have tribulation ten days. But be thou faithful unto death, and I will give thee a crown of life. Well done. Thy good and faithful servant. 
enter into the joy of the Lord. Mother made it in. The Bible says, and he will wipe away all the tears from thine eyes. And there shall be no more death, neither sorrow nor cry. Neither shall they sleep or be any more pain. For the former things are passed away, and all things are made new. Well, when the Bible instructed us, to drink ye all of it, I don't believe he was referring to Hennessy or Patron. <laughs> However, that was not Sister Bottles' Ooh. understanding. Ooh. Sister Bottles seemed to never be able to go without her liquor. Ooh. However, Ooh. though she had an alcohol struggle, she had a fire for God that never seemed to go out. Mm. Drunk she may be, she was always willing to lend a hand and had a willing heart. Ooh. Sister Bottles ran a homeless shelter, but she never, because she never liked to see God's people suffer. Life had just dealt Sister Bottles a really bad hand. Mm -hmm. And when the church could have ministered to her, they judged her because of her mm. struggle. <laughs> now she gets to stand before God, and we get to hear what more. God will say. A little bit more. Now judgment day is here. Ooh. That'll do me good right there. <laughs> blah, blah, blah. Uh -huh. Yin, yang, yang. Y'all yeah. always want to talk about my business. It exposed me. Right. Sent me to hell. But you don't want to talk about that $20 I let you hold in and get by. Oh, okay then. Tell them about it. Didn't I see you in the club last Thursday? That was, that was you? Okay, okay. So what I drink? Mm -hmm. But y'all be lying. But y'all don't want to talk about that now. The state don't want to talk about that. About what I'm trying to say is, there's no such thing as little sin, big sin. It's all sin. You ain't no better than me. That's right. You ain't no better than me. Say it one more time. You ain't no better than me. 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 Monday through Saturday, you try. Early Friday morning, try to send us to hell. Funny and fake nest. Show on your face, Jack. Bottles up. That's me. That's Will me. you please step forward? Yes, sir. The word of the Lord declares, Come to me, all you that are weary and burdened, mm -mm. and I will give you rest. Mm -hmm. You genuinely sought him times of joy and trial 
and trusted me with your life. Matthew 5 and 8 says, Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. When we are presented with the concept of purity, often our minds are led straight to abstinence, sobriety, or having a clean, sinless life. Mm -hmm. Though these things do accurately define purity, there are our external purities. Oh, yeah. Jesus says pure in heart, which is referring to internal purity, mm. once again showing his concern for our heart's position. I, the Lord, mm. search the heart, mm. and I try the reins, mm -hmm. even to give every man according to his ways and according to the fruit of oh, his yeah. doing. Oh, yeah. Well done, thy good and faithful oh, servant. Enter thou into the joy of the Lord. And the scripture declares, now unto him that is able to keep you from falling and to present you faultless hey! before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy to the only wise God be glory and majesty, dominion and power now and ever. And we say amen. And we tell God, thank you. My Lord. If there ever was a man that didn't take responsibility or accountability for anything, it was Deacon Crybaby. That man will blame the grass for being green and the sky for being blue. And as quiet as it is kept, I think he will blame Jesus for being born on Christmas rather than New Year's. He worked hard in ministry, gave plenty of money. He paid his tithe and his offering, but he always cried, woe is me. He seemed to always have a problem that was everybody else's fault. Can he cry his way into heaven? Now, judgment day is here. Oh, may it all my power and gain. I want to do my master's will. Charge I have a God to do who glorify to serve this prison age, my calling to fulfill to. I did all I can. 
and she ran off with that man down there holding all many. And he said he was going down there to greater joy. I told her 72 and Leonard was better. Oh, my daughter just took all of everything. She just took my land. She knew I couldn't read. She knew I couldn't write. She took everything. Everything. Every time I tried to go down there and hear old Rem Caldwell, it just couldn't get down. I am a car broke down. What? You don't know what I'm trying to say. Yes, Get sir. your hand off me. Yes, Every time I try to hear Rem car where my uh -huh. car break down, this is how I came looking like I'm looking. Them old you dogs, them ragged in my dogs, then came and told me all up. But you do too. <laughs> Get off of me. Don't bother me no more. I cry and I cry. Satan behind me. My bell, my wife keep nagging me. No my children on child support. me on child support at eight years old. I know what you're talking about. How you be on child support at eight years old? Yeah. You ain't got no money. How I you don't. I can get my teeth fixed with that child support on getting You might now. as well give it up. Trying to get my leg replaced. It ain't gonna work. Oh, man, all my power. You need it all. I ain't got no more power engaged. Uh -huh. But all I want to do is my master, my you master. You sure you want to do his will? I want to do it all. No, you don't. Yeah, I do. No, you don't. <sighs> oh. all, right, all right, sir. All right, mm. sir. Pilot. Oh. Please step forward. Right, right there, sir. Right there, sir. When we complain, it is frequently evil. To tell you what I've been too long. But complaining is not necessarily evil. There is a faithful believing way to complain and a faithless unbelieving way to complain. The Bible often recurs to the faithless as complaining, as grumbling, and warns us not to do that. In Numbers 14 and 26, John 6 and 43, Philippians 2 and 14, and James 5 and 9. Grumbling complains directly or indirectly to declare that God is not sufficiently good, faithful, loving, wise, powerful, or competent. Otherwise, he would treat us better or run the universe more effectively. Faithless complaining is sinful because it accuses God of doing wrong. God forbid, yea, let God be true and every man be a liar. As it is written, that thou yeah, may be justified in thy sayings, and thou might overcome when thou art judged. Depart from me. Oh, I Lord. never knew oh, you. Oh, no, Lord, I counted that money. I ain't never stole no money, I Lord. Right, that was Deacon Billy down there in Jacksonville, Lord, when we had a conversation. Yeah. He stole that money and lied to Rem Caldwell. He knew it. Huh? Yes, he oh, did. Mother Fraser knew it. Yes, he oh, knew it. And Lord, you knew what I did. Oh, you knew what I did, Lord. I prayed them prayers. I sang them hymns. <laughs> Hell need water. He can cry there. And the Bible teaches us. Do all things without murmurings and disputings, that ye may be blameless and harmless, the sons of God without rebuke, in the midst of a crooked and perverse nation, among whom ye shall sign as the lights of the world, holding forth the word of life, that you may rejoice in the day of Christ, that you can run and your labor not be in vain. If there was ever someone who knew condemnation, it's Brother AJ, or as the streets called him, the plug. 
Brother AJ seemed to live a controversial life. Always seen standing on a corner with all types of people. Had he ever heard of a shirt or a tie? Yeah. In all his life, the people talked about how they never wear anything yeah. outside of a hoodie, a fitted cap, yeah. and then little old bitty jeans. Yeah. In fact, that's exactly what he was buried in. Yeah. However, what many didn't know about yeah. Brother AJ yeah. is that the corner he stood on was the corner of his grandfather's church. Yeah. And he would always talk about always. the teachings his grandfather taught him yeah. to the people that stood on that corner. Yeah. To the world, he was okay. Yeah. But to the church, he made them feel uncomfortable. Yeah. But let's see what God has to say yeah. about Brother AJ's life. Yeah. Now, Judgment Day is here. What's up, my nigga? Yeah, go ahead, say it. Ooh. Come on. Boy, that look nice up there, boy. Don't they, don't they, don't they, yeah. There you go. Boy, that <laughs> look nice. I like to forgot where I was at, cuz. But hold on, cuz. I ain't gonna hold you tonight. Come on. Listen, I've been in the business for years. Then you get kicked out of heaven, break it off me. What? I've been in the business for I'm years. Trying, trying I've been you. trapping for a long time, cuz. And see, I done seen a lot. I done did a lot. I done off a lot of fools. You did. That's and right. I done beat down a lot of foolettes. Mm hmm Joe did. In street. Mm hmm They called me pastor. Pastor? Ah, I, I be pastoring. Yeah. They called me pastor. Pastor. In the street. Mm hmm And see, the, why, the, why they call me pastor is because I done gave it, bruh. Yeah. Mm hmm And I done took it the way it. You took it the way it. I took it the way from some people. See Oh, homeboy right there. Uh-huh, that's him. Him and his girl right there came up to me like four days ago. Sure did. They got that A from me. They sure did. They ain't paid me my money. See, they got lucky. You, they owe Because homeboy did. just off me about four days ago. Yes, they did. That's why I'm right here, man. That's right. But let me tell you, bro, it's only two reasons I do what I got to do, man. One, yeah. this ain't no choice of mine. I got to take care of my kids. That's right. Got to take care. Back up, bro. Back up. This about me. I got to take care of my kids. But two, uh -huh. it's my ministry. You see, I be getting up there. Hey, we can do this together. Come on. <laughs> we be up there. I'm telling you, yeah. I would never go up in that church down the road. No. Because I be high. That's right. High, high. I ain't finna go up in there. But see, in my church, high, high. the Trout Missionary Baptist Church, Trap. African Methodist Episcopal Temple of Zion. Yeah. They be having church down the year. International Ministries. International. We be high. High. And his train feel the temple. Feel the temple, yeah. The he glory cloud be coming up in there. Ooh. But you know what? I ain't even gonna hold you, bro. Yeah. Mm hmm. I ain't going to tell you no lie. No, no. We pray. Yeah. I tell these folks about the goodness of the Lord. No, you don't. Yes, I do. What? You was there, too. I sure was. But you didn't want to be. We had to cast you out. But you was there. I mean, you here with me You now. don't got no power. Y yes, I do. No, you don't. Yes, I do. He was there. We was in that thing, and we was praying and stuff. And you see, where I'm from, we understand that we not for everybody. You right about that. I know it. There were times I tried to fit in Wondering why I couldn't fit in But just like Jonah I have tried to run for my calling But God show me Show me my destiny. Now see, I'm not for everybody, but God made it easy for somebody. Never gonna do things that seem like there's nobody. Hear you when you pray, tell you everything's gonna be okay. I'm not for everybody. Try and see me here, say to somebody. That we're going through things that seem like there's nobody Hear you when you pray Tell you everything gonna be okay I won't ever Try to fit in I won't ever Try to bleed in I won't ever Try to do what others do Hey I won't ever 
Show, show, Jesus, show. Whoa, 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 whoa. Hey, hey, hey. Oh. Hey, you didn't say come that close. My bad. <laughs> My bad, cuz. He thought, he thought that boy off them. Deliverance of humankind from its state of alienation. Yeah. From God has been accomplished through the death and resurrection of myself. Yeah. Living in a fallen world as a believer means you will experience trials and tribulations oh, about it at Bible study, and will continue to struggle with your own temptation. Yeah. We are forgiven, yeah. but God is not finished with us as we yet see in Philippians 1 and 6. Yeah. Consequently, we long for a better world. Yeah. Even a perfect world is not a form of escapism. Rather, it is the Christian's rightful anticipation of a promise made by the one who justly pronounced a curse on this world yeah. and then lovingly took that curse upon himself in order to redeem people for his glory. Yeah. Behold, the Lord's hand is not shortened yeah. that he cannot save. Yes. Neither is he his, his ear heavy yes. that he cannot hear. Yes. But your iniquities have separated you between you and your God. And their sins have hid his face from you mm. that he will not hear. But Revelations 12 and 11 declare. What it said. And they overcame him they did what? by the blood of the lamb oh. and by the word of their testimony. And they loved not their lives unto death. Yeah. Well done, thy good and faithful servant. Enter into the joy. And the Bible tells us, if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just and will forgive us of our sins and purify us from all unrighteousness. And then he also told us that if my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray, seek my faith, and turn from their wicked ways. Then I will hear from heaven and will forgive their sin and will heal their land. Well, there was a quiet man who always sat in the back of the church. He never seemed to say too much until the power of God would move in the service. The people were always amazed at how the Lord will use him when he seemed to have nothing else to say. He was never dressed to their standards. He didn't fellowship much with the people. But when it was time for the Lord to move, he was always consecrated and available. Now, he has fallen asleep and has woken up in the presence of the Lord. Has his work spoken for his life. Now judgment day is here. For the next 60 seconds, can I get everybody in here to just holler and give God praise? Hey, can you thank God that Jesus is on the throne? That's all you need. I said, can you thank God that Jesus is on the throne? The one that fights for you. Hey, the one that has all the answers. Hey. The one that fights for you, he's on the throne. The one with all the power, he's on the throne. I said, give him praise. See, the reason why you're quiet is because the devil been beating up on you. But I believe that the name of Jesus, ever need, what's his name? I said, what's his name? What's his name? What's his name? Every devil has to bow at the name of, at the name of, Call him. Hey, 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 hey. Call him. He's wonderful. I promise you he's wonderful. I know y'all came for a production, but you're the producer tonight. Your praise is going to produce a miracle. 
Your praise is going to produce a breakthrough. What's his name? What's his name? Who saved you? Who delivered you? Who brought you out? Who brought you over? What's his name? Jesus. Lord, lift up a praise. Lift up a praise. Hey, this is our king we're talking about. This is our ruler we're talking about. His name is Jesus. Hey, and he came to save you. He came to deliver you. And he came to bring you out. Yo, ho, ho, ho. Hey. His name is Jesus. Prophet Orly. My Lord. Prophet Orly, please step forward. The word of the Lord declares, I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your body a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. And be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that ye may prove what is good and acceptable and perfect will of God. For I say, through the grace given unto me, that every man is among you not to think of himself more highly than he ought to think, but to think soberly, according to as God has dealt every man a measure of faith. For we as many members in one body, and all members not have the same office. So we being many are one body in Christ, and even one members as one of another. Having then gifts differing according to the grace that is given to us, where the prophecy let us prophesy according to the proportion of faith. Or ministry let us wait on our ministering, or he that teacheth on teaching, or he that exhorteth with exhortation, he that giveth him to do it with simplicity, he that ruleth with diligence, and he that showeth mercy with cheerfulness. Let love be without dissemination. Abhor that which is evil and cling to that which is good. Well done, thy good and faithful servant. Enter it. into the joy of the Lord. And the book of Romans says, And the God of peace shall bruise Satan under your feet. And the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ will be with you always, forever, and amen. Just tell somebody that name still works. Tell somebody again that name still works. And what is that name? What's that name? That name Jesus? It's my way in when I'm stuck. That name Jesus is my way out when I don't see a way. That name Jesus. Lord, Tell somebody, it's still in his name. There's still power in his name. Hallelujah. Can we lift, just lift Jesus high, you're right there. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. It's hot over here. If there ever was a person that could be omniscient, it would probably be Sister Shade. Somehow, some way, she always had the tea. She knew everybody's business. The, mind, the Bible admonished us to spread the good news not all the news, but not Sister Shade. If she knew it, she was going to tell it. There was no such thing as a secret with Sister Shade. Interesting, though, she never seemed to talk about 
the skeletons that were in her closet. But now judgment day is here. Tell him, Pastor. What? So good. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. So I was like, let me record her. Tell him, Pastor. Girl, she was at the altar just nucking and bucking and everything. I was like, what are you doing? Yeah, tell him about it, girl. But then... Uh -huh. When it came time for Pastor to ask for the tithe, what happened? Baby, she went inside her. No, she did. I said, no, baby, it's time for you to stand up now. <laughs> she ain't had no money. That's what it was. Get in line. <laughs> yeah. You're going to have to get your 10% today. <laughs> yeah. Like you gave them $10 in the sand trap last yeah, night. <laughs> you better let them like, know. Oh, uh uh, don't do it. Yeah. I was like, she looking at me, talking about, I know you're not recording me. I was like, but you did. no, I'm not. I'm yes, not recording. Yes, you did. Yes, you did. But, girl, you know I'm going to have Bible study at the house Tuesday night, right? Bible study? Okay. Why? So, come over there, and then I'm going to finish the rest of the Tuesday. All right, all right. Yeah, but okay. All right. Okay. All right, okay. All right. All right man. That's enough for that. Right. That's you enough. Get my ear. So, so Shady, you, you at heaven now. Maybe you at judgment. Thank you, Mama. Hold oh. on. No, let me put them on hold. Oh, no, no. <laughs> Hey, go up the phone. Okay. But <laughs> Sister Shade. Yes. Please step forward. Okay, you got some tea for me. Okay, whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> you got some tea for me? Step right oh, yeah. there. He got all the tea. <laughs> it better be good. <laughs> all right, that's it. You done had enough tea. Mm-mm. I haven't really. <laughs> Silence. <laughs> Whatever. Okay. Can we the word of the word? Lord declares mm -hmm. in Proverbs eleven thirteen. Mm -hmm. He who goes about as a talebearer reveals secrets, mm -hmm. but he who is trustworthy conceals the matter. Mm -hmm. Proverbs seventeen and nine says, "He who covers a transgression seeks love, but he who repeats a matter separates intimate friends." Hooray. Proverbs twenty and nineteen says, "He who goes about as a slanderer reveals mm -hmm. secrets." Therefore, do not associate with gossip. Ah. Proverbs 25, 9 and 10 says, Do not reveal the secret of another, hey, lest no he who hears it reproach you, <laughs> and the evil report about you does not pass away. We all have seen the wreckage that gossip can cause. Mm -hmm. Feelings hurt, trust destroyed, relationships ruined, and above all, an atmosphere of mistrust and fear. People feel reluctant to open up about a fear for other people were broadcasted. Also, people may not open up about serious problems or may sanitize their versions of those problems unless we can offer them safety and confidentiality. Merely avoiding gossip isn't enough. While the scripture above those shows the value for confidentiality between friends, the following passages signal a scripture for the value of transparency. Depart from me, you worker of iniquity. Yeah. Well, I, I, I never I knew you. They shouldn't have been you. doing it. I I'm just right. told the truth. You sure did. You got, got, you got some, some tea down here too. I got plenty of tea. Some good tea. But I ain't giving it to you. You ain't going to tell me that? No, uh-uh. Man, I got to call this girl Your back. Your days are over. Oh, right. <laughs> she should have known she was going to hell. Trying to tell I got another one. For the word of the Lord says, Judge not that ye be not judged. For with that judgment ye judge, you shall be judged. And with what measure you meet, it will be measured to you again. There was this traveling evangelist who was known all over the country, naming the name of Christ. She would cast out devils, lay hands on the sick. People were astonished at the ministry gifts she possessed. However, this traveling evangelist, evangelist get my bag, 
was all about her money. Her contract stated she would not even walk in the sanctuary until her check was clear. She had all these wants and demands, just needed. The question is, was ministry about her desire or about her destiny? I guess we're about to find out. Now, Judgment Day is here. Get your bag. You in the hotel. Make sure that my room is ready. Get it right. And mm -hmm. my linens are clean. Linen. Pressed. Pressed. And my sheets she starched. Starched. And my pillows fluffed. Yeah. Not padded. That's what I'm talking about. Fluffed. Make your demands. And I also want you to check my list to make sure that I'm getting my 5000 Check it twice. And I also want you to make sure my water is chilled. Tell them about it. And I only drink out of wine glasses. What? Just so you know. <laughs> I hope the people are ready for a word. Because <laughs> I want to bring them all to Christ. I ain't going to get no word from you. Thank you. Do you think I'll get them? Uh, yeah, yeah, you got them, girl. You got them. I think I'm prepared. Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. I think I will save about 100 souls tonight. Yeah, 100. Yes. Why not make it two? 200. Two. Yes. That's yes. what I'm talking about. I hope she know that her as money can't get her here. Her mm -hmm. money, money can't get her here. As long as they got your money. As long as they got okay, my money. that hat. You know, I got to secure that bag. You got to secure that bag. That's yes. a nice bag. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. That bag fade. Absolutely. It goes good with fire. Yes. Oh, no. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Wow. Ma'am, are you ready? Because we don't wait on you. Oh. Mm-hmm. Okay. Get back to me. Get my bag. Will you please step forward? Right there. Those ain't red bottoms. The word of the Lord declares, Will a man rob God? Yet ye have robbed me. But ye say wherein, where, where ye have robbed thee, in tithes and offerings. Ye are cursed with a curse, for ye have robbed me, even this whole nation. You shall not steal, as stated in the Eighth Commandment, to God's first covenant people, holds true for God's new covenant people just they the same. Me. I didn't steal it. In a sense, even more seriously than it did for the first of those, I loathe and prohibit looting among covenant people in every age. Although people at times may justify stealing under mitigating circumstances, stealing is always condemned in Scripture. That's right. they you pay. shall not steal. Exodus 20 and 15, Leviticus 19 and 11, Deuteronomy 5 and 19. Let the thief no longer steal. Ephesians 4 and 28. The Apostle Paul warned the church that if robbers do not repent, God will rob them of the pleasure of robbery, withholding the kingdom from them forever. That is 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verses 9 through 10. Looters will soon greet the looming eternal destruction unless they repent. And in your case, you did not. It is written that my house shall be called a house Our of prayer. Father. But you have made it a den of thieves. Depart from me, you worker of iniquity. I never knew you. All right. What about the souls I've saved? What about the people I brought to Christ? You ain't brought nobody to Christ. You brought it to me. Oh, my God. Oh, Jesus. Oh, God. Money got her to hell. And there's a story in the book of Acts. On an appointed day, Herod put his hand on royal robes, took his seat upon the throne, and delivered an oration to them. And the people were shouting the voice of a God and not of a man. Immediately, an angel of the Lord struck him down because he did not give God his glory. And he was eaten by worms and breathed his last breath.
don't be found guilty of robbing God of his glory. If there was ever a person that had been dealt a bad hand, it was Sister No Hope. She was abandoned by her parents at birth. Her adoptive parents died before she graduated high school. She got married and her husband left her for another woman in the same church, taking everything she had and leaving her homeless. However, Sister Hope never seemed to break. Though homeless, she always found herself in God's house, singing and cleaning. And she would keep the church ready for God's next move. She may have died broke, but she wasn't broken. Now Judgment Day is here. Lord, I come to thee. I'm laying prostrate at your feet. And in your presence is where I want to be here I am here I am at your feet oh, I cast all my cares upon you Lord for you know what's best for me and you supply all of my needs if I stay here at your feet if I stay at your feet oh, oh, oh. in your presence in your presence in your presence is where I want to be In your presence, get behind me, Satan. In your presence is where I want to be. Oh, in your presence, I don't want to be nowhere else, God.
stand all over the sanctuary this isn't a part of the play this isn't a part of the skit but this is the part where we can all play a role in with your hands lifted can you take about 50 seconds just to begin to raise a worship all over this sanctuary I believe there's about 150 people in this room that after seeing this you've already made heaven your home come on I want to see can we enter into his gates with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise. The musicians are gonna help us worship, but I want you to just to begin to give your life to him tonight. Come on, I came to Jesus just as I was, weary, wounded, and sad. I want you to begin to raise the decibels of your worship in this moment, because I believe that the Father is responding to the posture of your heart tonight. I wanna know, is there anybody in the room that your worship is your signal? That before I put my home in hell, I will lift mine eyes up to the hills. From when coming my help, all of my help comes from the Lord. Come on, I want you to raise that worship right here. Something's happening in this atmosphere. Hey, come on, my son of the Holy I want you to worship for the people in your family that aren't saved yet. I want you to begin to call their name in this atmosphere. I don't care who they are, what they're doing. We decree that drugs can't have our young people. We decree that the gangs can't have our young people. I need to know, do I have any intercessors in the room? That divorce is not the end of the story. That molestation and rape and suicide is not the end of the story. But if God be for me, come on, I need somebody to help me raise a sound of strength and warfare in the room. I want to hear him say, well done. Yeah, come on, I want to hear him say, well done. I want to hear him say, well done. Well done. I want to hear him say, well done. For my children, for my spouse, for my household. It's not about the money. It's not about the houses. It's not about the cars. But I want to hear him say, well done. My good and faithful servant. What? Wow. 
So for those of you who aren't saved in the room, and you want to hear him say, well done, my good and faithful servant. I don't want to scare you into hell. I want to love you into heaven tonight. I don't want you to come to heaven and give God your heart tonight because you're scared of fire and brimstone. But I want you to come to the altar and give God your heart tonight because can't nobody do me like Jesus. Let me find some people in the room that say, I didn't come because I was scared. I came because he loved me. Through loving kindness have I drawn thee. They didn't have to preach to me about damnation, but when nobody else was there for me, he stepped in. When I was about to go crazy, he came in. It's when I felt like I was on my last, God fixed it. The interesting thing about it, Bishop, is some of us have gotten so comfortable in salvation that we forget we got to renew our covenant every now and again. And so you might have came to the altar years ago, but let me find some real folk. I made some mistakes between my last yes and right now. There may be somebody in the room. You need to come to the altar and you may need to say, God, I want to give you another yes tonight. My last yes got some rumors on it. My last yes got some mud on it. But I'm going to come tonight and I want to give you and rededicate my life back to Christ. Will there be one? Come on, we want to rededicate our heart back to him. Will there be one that says in this season of my life, I can't go another day not knowing where my home will be. Look at all the saved people in the room. Can we praise God right here? Wait, no, no, no. I want you to praise God that the person you, wait, we got some folk coming. We got some folk coming. We got about 10, there's 10 more of you. I want you to come meet me at the place of dedication. Come on there, there are about 10 more of you. I want you to meet me at the place of dedication. Come on, preachers, will you help me? Let's do this. I need you to be an evangelist. Will you check your section? Come on, tell them I'll come with you. I'll come with you. I'll come with you. I don't want you to be embarrassed. I'm not perfect myself. I got some rumors. I got some stuff I've been going through. Come on, come on. Do it. Do it. I want you to evangelize your section. Search your section and say, do you want me to walk with you? Come with you. I'll help you down there. Come on, they're still coming. While they're coming, you're clapping. While they're coming, you're praising. While they're coming, it's some older people that need to meet us in this space. It doesn't matter about your age, it matters about your submission. Hey, come on, if you're at this altar, I just want you to lift your hands. And I want you to begin to give him a surrender. Because tonight changes the trajectory of your life. I'm getting ready to pray for you, but I'm waiting on about five more people that'll meet me at this altar. Uh-oh. Come on, something's happening in this atmosphere. Something's happening in this atmosphere. Hold on, musicians. There are five more of you. Because the pain of yesterday keeps playing in your mind. And tonight, God wants to heal you from the memory of what once was. And your coming to the altar tonight is literally going to free you from what has carried its way into your life for decades. I want to know, can you be bold enough to come stand in the gap for somebody in your family that you won't save? Let me find a faithful parent that can say before this year is over with, they come into Christ. Thank you. While they're coming, you're clapping. No, no, while they're coming, you're clapping. While they're worshiping, you're clapping. I need about eight more people that can come stand in the gap. Somebody, God's going to save them by the time the summer hit. If I, if I got enough faith for it, I need you to link your faith with mine. I know 
what we pay it for production. But I feel a shifting in this atmosphere. Preachers, will y'all help me pray? Ushers, deacons, prophets, will y'all help me pray? Will you grab somebody and pray with them at this altar? Hey, watch it, watch it. I feel something happening. Will you grab somebody and pray with them? Father, in the name of Jesus. Father, we thank you tonight that for every person at this altar, this has now become a place of restoration. We begin to call out the name of our family members. Those that we want saved. Those that we believe by faith will be saved because of our cry tonight. Father, we make the declaration that no weapon formed against them will prosper. And every tongue that rises up against them in judgment has already been condemned. I call the name of that son. I call the name of that daughter. I call the name of that niece, that nephew, that cousin, that aunt, that uncle. I decree and declare by the power of Yeshua that you will come out of the grips of hell. That you will come loose and let them go. That for every person that's locked behind bars, for every person that's caught, that's addicted to drugs and alcohol, perversion and promiscuity, we break it. Come on. Somebody help me pray tonight. We break it in the name of Jesus. We decree and declare that whom the Son sets free is free indeed. I speak freedom into your mind. Freedom into your heart. Freedom into your body. Every sickness, every disease, every demonic limitation, every predilection of hell, we decree and declare that tonight it breaks. Every yoke is destroyed by the power of the Holy Ghost. Father, we pray tonight for every person that's at this altar for a renewed covenant that as they give their life to you tonight, their life is forever changed. But as we give you this yes, come on. As we give you this yes tonight, not thy will, but thy will be done. I give up my right. I give up my life. I submit myself under the mighty hand of God. I humble myself. I can't do it without you. I can't make it without you. I can't live without you. I can't breathe without you. I need you. I need you. I need you. I need you. As the deer panted for the water broke, so my soul. So my soul. So my soul longs for you. There's a longing at the altar. I'm at the altar. Yeah. And I want you to bless my soul. I'm coming to you, God. Wash me again. Clean me again. Fill me again. Start me up again. Stir up my life. Oh my son. I've been sitting on my gift too long. But stir me up tonight. Doing it my own way, but stand me up tonight. I've been leaning on my own understanding, but stand me, stand me. Stop on the level, hold ya. Come on, somebody open your mouth and say, "Stand me tonight." Stand me. I need you, Jesus. I need you, Jesus. I need a fresh washing. Hey, <laughs> I need a fresh washing. I need you to do it again. I need you to feel me, God, on the day of Pentecost. Feel me like you did in Acts 2 when they were all gathered together in one place on one accord. And suddenly there came a sound from heaven like that of a mighty rushing wind. Feel them again. Feel the young people. Feel this altar. Feel this generation. Feel up, feel up, till we look like you. Feel up, feel up, till we talk like you. Feel up, feel up, till we live like you. Feel us again, feel us again. We break the generational curse. Feel us again, we break the lie. Feel us again, we break the cause. Every soul time. Feel us, feel us, yeah. yeah. Feel us again. Feel I us. need to be filled. I need to go down with a fresh baptism. Come on, come on. That's right. Labor with them. 
Come on, young people, don't let him go. Don't let him go. We don't labor like we used to. Let me find some altar workers that'll get in their ear and say, I'm not gonna let you go out like this. Let me find some intercessors out here. I need you to grab the hand of the person you're standing next to. And I need you to begin to pray for that hand that you're holding. Come on, grab that hand. You standing out there, grab that hand. Grab that hand. And I need you to pray for them. That no weapon formed against them. Y'all ain't praying. Y'all ain't praying. I need something to hit that section. Come on, come on. All of it, all of it. We need a fresh feeling. We need, oh, we need a fresh feeling. Ah, we need a fresh feeling. Come on, give it to him. There go, give it to him. Give it to him. Give it to him. Give it to him. Out of your belly. South Flow Rivers. Out of your belly. Come on. South Flow Rivers. I release a grace over you. God forgives you for everything that's been holding you up. Come on. Rivers. 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 Fill us again. Fill us up. Fill us up. Rivers. Stir us up tonight. Rivers. Fill us up tonight. Yes. after me Ooh, for the sake of a new covenant even if you ain't at the altar I want you to repeat after me 
Lift those hands in the presence of a holy God. This is a sign of surrenderance. It's a sign of obedience. And it's a sign that I got another yes, Lord. Repeat after me. Say, Father, I repent for every sin that I've committed. Sins of omission. Sins of commission. I repent. And tonight, come into my heart. I love you. I need you. I can't make it without you. Tonight, Father, I give you a fresh yes. And because of my yes, I believe that my life will never be the same. I am saved by the blood of Jesus that was shed for me over 2,000 years ago. I believe that because he rose on the third day, I'll never be the same. Now, if you believe it, will you help them praise God at the altar? Come on, this is a reason why we come to church. This is the time that you will shout. All oh, that men will praise him. I need the redeemed of the Lord to open your mouth and scream. Somebody just shout, I am redeemed. Come on, shout. Come on, they still praising them at the altar. They still praising them at the altar. They still, are they dancing in the back? This the way you do it when you love Jesus. to start a baptism line. But somebody believe you're going to be baptized with the Holy Ghost tonight. I, I believe God want to feel some people tonight. If you ain't never spoken tongues, I believe he going to give you the indwelling of the Holy Ghost tonight. After that, the Holy Ghost shall come upon you. And you shall speak. What my tongue talking saints said in the room. What my tongue talking say? is what God could do at a production. I can imagine what he gonna do at convocation. If God doing this at a play, mother don't do that. <laughs> if, I'm not gonna be a sinner, if God can do this at a play,
Do me a favor, tell your neighbor, say, hey neighbor, I'm praising God because everybody in your family going to be saved for real. Do me a favor, tell somebody, tell them, say, hey neighbor, you ain't going to have to bury nobody else no time soon. Now if you believe it, tell somebody behind you, cancel the funeral. Cancel your funeral plans, but you shall live and declare the glory of God. What? Well, uh, 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 your mama gonna live, your grandma gonna live, your niece, your nephew, they gonna live. And I'm telling you, that's what you do. I feel life just stepped in this room. You gotta prophesy down your own and tell them live, 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 live. Divorce couldn't kill you, baby. That's why you gotta live. Jail couldn't kill you. That's why you gotta live. I ain't trying to start nothing, but I need you to do a breath check. As long as I got breath in my body, we gonna be all right. Shine in the old sun in the high. All right. gonna live. the Lord tonight with a seed of $55. Five is the number of grace. And I want you to release a seed because it is a seed that can break a cycle. And I believe that for those of us that have not only received salvation, but believe that breakthrough is coming to their household. I need at least 10 people tonight that will stand with me. I'm a soul. I'll make one. So I need nine more people with that seed of 55. We want to be a blessing tonight to our production come. All of my sowers, will you come stand here? I believe that the Lord is releasing something strategic over your household. And when you sow tonight, I want you to declare, this is for my house. 
One, two, three. I need seven more people full of faith. Four, five. I just need five more. Six. I need four more now. You coming? Seven, I need three more. Oh, oh, you coming to help. Okay, that's eight. Come on, where my two at? $55 is nothing to somebody that's your whole family. I hear the Lord saying, you're going to get a phone call this week. I just need two more people. Watch that, Aaron. I don't want to start nothing here. Hey, shut up. I got to stop. I start prophesying. I start seeing. Prophesy over every person tonight that's sowing that seed of 55. Lift that seed towards heaven. I hear the Lord saying to tell you, not only will this be a seed of breakthrough, but the Lord says you're going to begin to break into the hard places and the hard spaces. God says tonight, because of your seed and your sacrifice, your seed just captivated your harvest. And the Lord said that this was this, this was the seed that broke into the rocky place, the stony place, the gravel. I hear the Lord saying to tell you, look for the harvest in the next 72 hours. By Wednesday of next week, some of you are going to receive confirmation and validation and the door will be open. All right, we're releasing that seed. Everybody else, I need you to get as close as you can to $25. We're going to hit our goal tonight. 25 I need your skinny 20 Everybody with that seat of 25, I need you to run down here right now. Thank you, thank you. Every person with that seat of get as close as you can to it. Come on, you're sowing that seat of 25. Thank you. Thank you. Bishop didn't tell me to prophesy, so I won't prophesy. But I feel the Holy Ghost in here. Thank you, thank you. Every person with that seed of 25, we want to let the young people know we love them, we support them, we appreciate them. Because if we be honest, it's sad that some of us could have been doing something else. But I was glad when he said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. I want everybody to get a chance to give. You got your 55, your 25, your $2.50, whatever it is. I want you to come on and bring it. Thank you. Thank you, thank you. Look at all the blessed people sowing. Look at all the blessed people sowing. Thank you. God for our giving all over the sanctuary. Come on, let's thank the Lord for your giving. Let's th come on, thank the Lord for your giving. This is your seed.
Now quickly, with all the vim, vigor, and vitality that you possibly can, as we stand all over this building, can we give this production team a round of applause for such an amazing presentation? Oh, that's horrible. I said with a major round of applause. Let's erupt in this place. They did a phenomenal job. Let's receive our bishop as he comes. Just a few moments, you may have your seats. Thank you, Pastor Stone. Let's give God praise for Pastor Stone. I tell you, after Alexis' song, it was going to bring him to heaven, but the spirit moved, amen, <laughs> and it intercepted, and we thank God. We thank God. Just before I acknowledge, <laughs> I want to thank God for all of those that gave their lives to Jesus. Come on, can we clap our hands for those that came up to the altar? Amen. God bless you and our brother there brought all those young people. Amen. Thank you. Amen. Thank you. Allow me to, and when I call the names come out, our National Nurse Loretta Strada. Come on, let's give God praise for her. Come on. Come on, clap your hands. Lady Ebony Robinson Payne. Come on, come on. Overseer K. Tremaine Dupree. Mother Ruby Frazier. Thank God for Bishop Bivens Morell Walker. <laughs> Still limping. Minister Aaron Mack. <laughs> Minister Kyrie Stokes. This one by Jacksonville Church. <laughs> Sister Trina Hicks. Our sister Rhonda Butler. Sister Alexis Johnson. Come on, y'all. She concluded. I think she went to change. Dr. Robert O'Keefe House, our overseer, he played as Jesus. He's the president of our school. Our school is accredited. He came all the way from Nashville, Tennessee. Come on, show some love to Overseer Hassel, my son, Minister Trey Rucker, Brother James Durr, Marcus Denson Jr., Jara Keaton, and our narrator did a wonderful job. Prophet Brendan Howard. And let's thank God for our musicians. Brother John Lismore. Jaron Mack. Markel Pierce. Brother Derek Blackman. And last but certainly not least, he played as the devil. Now listen, we've known the devil as we've seen in pictures, horns and a pitchfork. But the devil come dressed up. Let's thank God for my own biological brother, Overseer Andrew F. Caldwell, Jr. 
Come on, Montre. Let's give God praise for Minister Montre Mary. Come on. These were original songs that he composed. Come on, come on, come on. I want to thank everyone that came. We have representations from quite a few churches that came to support on this evening. And I know we started just a little late to make sure that our live stream was properly working. But we thank God for our my goddaughter, Sister K Kanitra Cloud, was, and our sister Jennifer Bailey for our media presentation. Come on, show some love. It was a one. Minister Merritt, come, come up here with me. Camilla, who's the spokesman? And we're about to let you go. Because we do have church tomorrow. I think it's no Sunday school, right? Sunday school tomorrow? No Sunday school tomorrow. No Sunday school. No Sunday school tomorrow. We start at 12 noon. Amen. All right. Before before Minister Merrick say his last sayings, I won't. My Lord. <laughs> oh my God, what an awesome time on tonight. God is good, y'all. He has moved in this place. Amen. If she would have sung another song, we probably would still be out right about now, right? But God is good. Thank you all so much. What a wonderful production today. We are honored to be in your presence on tonight. Um, we come, we are Tophany Entertainment. Um, we've been doing stage plays for about 20 years now, and God has been faithful. He has been good to us. He has allowed us to travel all over, and we spread our theme to everyone, and God has just moved for us. Um, right now, we are currently touring Dr. Love. Somebody say Dr. Love. Um, we have a whole lot of stuff that's lined up on this year. Um, we look to be in the city of Albany for Mother's Day. Um, March the 3rd, we will be at the Evangelical Faith Ministries for their church anniversary. We will be presenting Dr. Love on March the 3rd. So if you're not busy, it's on, a, on the first Friday in March. At 7 p.m., you can come check us out. Um, like I said, God, I'm, I'm just lost for words. God is just so good. Um, go ahead, Tony. <laughs> amen, amen. We were truly blessed, amen, by the production here on tonight. Um, I hats are off to each and every one of you guys on tonight. Again, we just bring you greetings from Tophany Entertainment. My wife and I, we've been doing this, like she has said, over 20 years. And um, check us out. We're on Facebook, Tofen Entertainment. You can find more information on us. We love to make people laugh. And we just have found a way to harness that gift to allow people to laugh, sing, and just enjoy through stage play. So, again, we love you guys. We appreciate you guys. God bless you. Thank you, thank you for them to say we did a wonderful job. That is commendable, amen? Amen. Just before we, I was looking over there, we thank God for Bishop Devion Williams for being our runner tonight. Come on down here, come on. Come on, let's give God praise for Bishop Williams, amen. At this time, we're about to exit as soon as Minister Merrick give his sayings, I will give, amen. We will have our closing prayer. I'm going to ask our Bishop Mike to come and give us our closing prayer. No, I'm sorry. I'm going to ask Reverend Johnson to come. Amen. To give us our closing prayer. One more time. Let's thank God for Minister Montre Mary. Come on. Amen. I just want to thank everybody for coming out. Um, Y'all don't know what this does for me. Um, but I just gotta say thank you to the cast oh hold on hold on hold on before y'all even clap 
no rehearsal. No rehearsal. I'm talking about with music, everything. No rehearsals. So just imagine if they had an opportunity, just one opportunity with the talent. Can we give them a hand? Oh, come on, y'all can do better than that. But from my heart, COP, I love you. It's family. Everything we doing, man, we're, we're going up. We're going up. Albany, we're going up. This is the good life city. Come on, we're going up. This whole southwest region, we're going up. Come on, come on. So again, I just want to say thank you, and I love you. And stay tuned. We got some more stuff coming. This was the first one, and for this first one, I think they did a wonderful job. Amen. Everybody did a wonderful job. Come, Reverend Johnson. Thank you all for coming on a Saturday evening. Amen. The service is tomorrow and starting at 12 o'clock. And I do have to preach tomorrow for Pastor Corey Moss on the east side of Albany. Amen. At 6 o'clock, so I have two tomorrow. So please come and let's enjoy the Lord with us. One more time, if you really enjoyed this play, will y'all please show our actors and actresses some love. Come on, come on. We got the Albany State guests clapping, yeah. <laughs> the Golden Girls, eh? <laughs> Amen. God bless you. God bless you. All all been a stake alumni stand. All all been a stake alumni. Come on. Look at ASU. Lady Benton. All right. Look at ASU. Come on. Clap your hands for ASU. <laughs> students of all been a stake university stand. Students. Are there any students? All right. Here. Right here. Trey. All right. High school students. Let me see you. High school students. Let me see you. All right. Yeah, that's junior or uh, high. Come on, yeah, yeah. Amen. Elementary. Where are you? Elementary. Amen. Yeah, yeah. Amen. Got preschool. All right, all right. Got preschool. Okay, yeah. <laughs> Amen. Everybody's standing. Everybody's standing. Amen. This has been wonderful. And thank you for giving because what you gave. Amen. We can take care of who we need to take care of. Amen. God bless you. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Father God, we thank you for this time that we spent together. We thank you, God, for every soul that was saved tonight. We thank you for every young person. We thank you for every old person tonight, God. We thank you for the man of God who allowed us to come to this place tonight for this play. But we got delivered and set free tonight. And we thank you now, God, as we deliver, leave this place. I pray now for that young lady they brought, took out of here tonight, God, that you keep your loving arms of protection around her. You know what's going on with her body. We pray that everything is okay right now in the name of Jesus. We know that you got power, God. Whatever is going on, you do it well, and you do it so well tonight. And we thank you tonight, God. The Bible says, unto him who is able to keep us from falling, to present us blameless before the presence of his glory with great joy, to the only God, our Savior, through Jesus Christ our Lord, be glory majesty, dominion, and authority before all time, now and forevermore. And the church says, amen. Be blessed tonight. Amen.